Genesis chapter 40, verses 1 through 23. That is the entire chapter. Genesis chapter 40 and its entirety. As we come to uh, week five of the life of Joseph. Week five of the life of Joseph. I, I want to read for you verses 1 through 8 and then we'll go through uh, the rest of the verses. So this is what the word of God says. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, officials, excuse me, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. Amen. This is the word of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. We have come to week number five in the life of Joseph. Joseph has found himself in prison. It seemed as if everything was going well for Joseph and then somebody had to notice how handsome and well-built he was. It was Potiphar's wife. She noticed he was a good-looking young man, and she began to tempt him. She began to throw herself at him, and he denied her every step of the way. So much that she got so frustrated, instead of just speaking to him, she put her hands on him. She grabbed him saying, hey, lay with me, lay with me. He removed his own robe and he got out of it. He took off running. The robe that Joseph wore was left in her hands and now he is identified again by a robe. The first time by the robe that his father gave him and his brothers, they plotted and they gave false information saying that he was torn to pieces and dead by some ferocious animal. Now, here comes another robe. He left his, his robe and he took off. He left it there and now she has kept it and she's told her husband, Potiphar, this man tried to make sport of me. This man came in and he tried to take advantage of me. And he put him... In prison. I said last week, if I was Joseph, I'd never wear another cloak again. I'd never buy another coat because these coats keep leaving behind evidence and people are using it as false evidence. But we found out this. Nevertheless, God is always with Joseph. Here he is in prison. And Joseph has been placed as the leader over the prison, the warden trusted him with everybody there. And here we come to this passage today, chapter 40. If this was a regular message and not a narrative message as, as we've been doing, I would entitle this, you know, a uh, true servant leadership. Because we're going to see what a true leader looks like from this chapter through the life of Joseph. Joseph is in a bad place. He's in prison. He, he's, he's not in some, 
He doesn't have the freedom that he used to have. Remember, he was over everything and everything he'd done, it prospered. Joseph was always in the mix and he'd done everything the way God wanted him to do it. But here Joseph find himself in some trouble because of false accusations. Some of us would be still mad and fighting and cussing and furious. But Joseph just one of them guys, he just, you know, God, you with me, so we're going we to go on along with it. We're we, we, we going to keep going with it. And, and, and this is what we have to find out about a real servant leader, about true leaders, leaders who truly, truly belong to God, is that true leaders are servants. True leaders are servants. Because here Joseph is, he's in a dungeon, he's in a prison, and, and, and so he's there for some time. And then here comes a baker and a chief cup bearer, or, or they call him also a butler, this chief cup bearer. These guys had very important jobs. They were trustworthy jobs. The king, the pharaohs, they depended on these people. Because the cup bearer was the one who always placed the cup in his hand. Either he would taste it or he would have a taster to make sure that it's not poison. So he would come up with the cup. Hey, is this for the king? Yeah, this is for the king. He would, he would taste it. If he start foaming at the mouth or he die, then they know that it's poison. He, he had to be trusted by the king, by the pharaohs. And so his job was very important. And now here he is. He's placed in this dungeon, this prison. But then also, that's the baker there. He baked the pastries and the bread for the king. And someone had to taste it. Either he would taste it in front of the king or someone else would taste it in front of the king. And so here they are placed in prison. But we believe, according to the writer, the historical writings of Josephus, that that was a plot to kill the pharaoh. That was a plot to kill the king. So he didn't know who it was, so he placed both of them in this dungeon, in this prison, until the investigation had been finished, and they can find out who it was trying to kill the king. Because many enemies would choose these two occupations, the, the chief butler who's the cup bearer or the baker to pay them off to poison the king so that now they can come into power. And it, it wasn't just people outside of the palace. Sometimes it was a, a younger brother who knew that he would never be king unless he kills off his older brother because he's in line. Or, or, or a sister who's set up to be queen but she's around the same age and her brother was outliving her. They needed to kill off the king so now that they can come into power. And so they were always set up to be the ones to kill the king. And so in verse 4 it says this, that the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph and he attended them. He, he's in prison. Joseph attended them. This is the sign of true leadership. The, the King James Version said that he served them. The new King James says he served them. They were assigned to him, and yes, he's in prison, but he is serving them. Real leaders are servants. Amen. Joseph is a servant. Although he's in prison, he's also serving. See, in God's plan and in God's system, leadership means service. Authority means service. See, the, the heart of a leader is to serve. Jesus Christ came here. He is God in the flesh. He is the son of the living God. He is the word that became flesh. But he did not come here to be served, but he came here to what? To serve. See, real leaders are servants. And, and this is why many commentators believe that Joseph is a type of Christ. He is a picture of Christ. He is, the, he is everything that we see Christ do, he has done. He shows us the way to Christ through his service. And he says this, after they had been in custody for some time, 
Each of these men had a dream. The cupbearer had a dream and, 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 and the, uh, the baker had a dream. And each one of their dreams had a different meaning of its own. But verse 6 says this. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. Listen, real leaders can recognize when people are hurting. Real leaders can recognize when people are are in need. And he saw that they had something going on. He saw that they had a need. He saw that they were dejected. And he said this. Why do you all look so sad? He, he said, he said, why do y'all look so sad? Verse 7 says this. So he asked Potiphar's officials who were in custody with him. In his master's house. Remember how I said last week. You, listen. Read the scripture. Every verse. Every phrase. Every word. Because Potiphar was angry last week when he got the report. Right. But, but, but I believe that he was angry at who? At his wife. Not Joseph. Because if that was the case. For, for, for taking someone else's wife. In Egypt. You get the death penalty. But, but he had such a, a favor with God. He had such respect by Potiphar because of how he carried himself. He couldn't kill Joseph. Everything that he put in Joseph's hands, it prospered. Everything that he done was successful. He cared about nothing, remember, but his food. And so he placed him in a place where only the king's men go to prison. And he said that. He's in his master's house. The captain of the guard is over the prison. And, and, and here he is. He's in a place where he can still serve God and serve people. And so while he's there, he's in this, this dungeon, which happens to be, uh, commentators believe, Underneath part of his house because he's over all of this. And so he put him in a favorable place, yet he still does not have freedom. It's like a prison, but it's more like, you know, a, a club fed where they sent uh, Martha Stewart to prison. You know, they can still play golf. They got cable TV, you know, AC and all that kind of stuff. So, so, but he has no freedom. He's here and he is being a servant. He saw them. He said, man, why y'all so sad? They are in the same place. He could have said, man, stop looking like that. Stop. Listen, we both in this unfavorable place. We're in a place where we don't want to be. Let's just get through this. Let's just handle our business because we both have a, a, a sentence that we have to uphold. But he looked and he saw that they were in need. Real leaders can in many times overlook what they going through. Be ready in season and out of season. It may not be your season, but somebody else is going through a season. And you may be in a bad place in your life, and somebody else may be in a bad place in your life. Do you throw a pity party as a leader, or do you go and see about them? Are you praying for them as well? Are you being a blessing to them also? We have to sit ourselves aside and be a blessing to others. See, this is what Christ done in the, the, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, uh, chapters 12, 13, and 14, Jesus begins to break it down to his followers, to his disciples. He say, hey, I, it, is, it is time for the Son of Man to suffer. He say, I, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be turned over. They're, they're going to hate me. They're going to despise me. They're going to kill me. Then he says this, you know what? One of y'all going to betray me. He's just giving them bad news after bad news after bad news. And then he said, even your leader, Peter, he will deny me. He, he, he's going to deny me. But then he opens up in John chapter 14 after saying and giving them all this bad news. I'm going to die. You're going to betray me. You're going to deny me. I'm going to be turned over. He opens up and he says, listen, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, then, then, then believe also in me. For, for in my Father's house, 
There are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, guess what? I'm going to come and receive you to myself. And where I go, you will go also. He, he's not concerned about himself. He's the one that's about to die. He's the one that's about to be uh, 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 persecuted. He's the one who's going to be stretched out. He's the one who's going to be whipped and beat. He is the one who's going to be hurt through all this. But he has a mindset to serve them. He didn't care about his crucifixion. He didn't care about his death. He didn't care about the betrayer and the denier and all of this and everybody who's against him. He said, I have to make sure that these men are okay so they can go and do the work of the Lord. Amen. He cared more about them than himself. That's what a true servant leader is. True leaders are servants. Jesus Christ was a servant. Joseph. A servant. True leaders serve. But watch this. True leaders give recognition to God. All right. Look at verse 8. He says this. We both had dreams. They answered. But there is no one to interpret them. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph said to them. Do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. Mm -hmm. Joseph did not try to take glory for himself. He recognized and he honored God. He said, because God is the one who interprets. He, he didn't try to uh, uh, take anything or, or, or say, hey, hey, I can do this myself. He knew this. Apart from God, I am nothing. Apart from God, I'm nothing. Apart from God, I can do nothing. Apart from God, who am I? It is God. Who interprets? Yes. Yes. See, see, th there are too many people who say, hey, man, I can interpret dreams. Just tell me your dreams. Listen, and they telling you everything wrong because they're trying to build themselves up. But Joseph didn't say, hey, man, I can interpret it. Just tell me. He said, no, no, no. I want you to know who this is coming from. It is God who does the interpreting. Yes. See, people, people say these kind of, kind of things to build themselves up. It's all about them being recognized. It's all about them being elevated. But Joseph, he doesn't care about himself. He just wants to serve God and serve people. And he let God stand out and be elevated. And he just wants to blend in. And he doesn't want to steal God's glory. See, people who always want titles and want positions, they just want to steal God's glory. They just want to be told uh, about how great they are and not how great God is. Joseph recognized God. I, I love the way the New Living Translation says in, in, in uh, chapter 40, verse 8, it says this. In Genesis 40 and 8, it says this New Living Translation. And they replied, we both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. That, that, that's who, this is God's business. This is not about me. I'm not the interpreter. I don't need no glory or recognition. I want you to recognize that this is from God. You remember when we used to be in, in, in Mission Greens Point and we had the food pantry and I would go up there and I would, I would uh, uh, volunteer for the food pantry every week. And there were some people who would come in and before they would go up to the food pantry or to the clothes closet to get food and to get clothes, they had to come to me and some other folks. Tell us their prayer requests. We have to witness to them and tell them about Jesus Christ and, and, and see if they want to put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. And, and many people will say this to me. You know what? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't need to hear about Jesus. I don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. I'm not a believer. I'm, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in a God. I, I just need help with my groceries. I need, I need clothes right now. I'm in a bad place. And I will tell them as I say, you may not believe. You may not want to hear from God, but I want to tell you this today. Everything that you receive from this mission today, the food, the clothes, has come from Jesus Christ. So, so you may not believe, but God believes. And, and God is blessing 
Because God created you. And Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. So while you not believing in Him, He believing in you. Because you are here right now and you are receiving a blessing from the Lord God Almighty. And then they say, you know what, well, well maybe you can pray for me. See, because when you tell them, when you glorify God, when you give recognition to God, it'll change their mind. Joseph said, interpreting dreams is God's business. You don't own the business. You don't have no monopoly. People are like, I'm a dream interpreter. I don't like to see them on TV. When I see it on TV, I just immediately turn it. You, you trying to steal all God's glory? That's blasphemy. You need to be giving God glory. You are not the one who is in charge here. You are not the one who is doing the work. God is doing the work. And can I say this to you? Not every dream needs an interpretation. Sometimes you just ate too much. Sometimes you just, you just ate bad food. My little brother Avery, he, he would eat so much when he was a little boy. I remember my mom and, and, and dad, they were going up to Dallas, and, and, and Dean woke up screaming in the middle of the night, and my mom said, what's wrong with you? He said, hot dogs chasing me. <laughs> Because we had hot dogs. He ate so many hot dogs for dinner. He had a dream that hot dogs were chasing him. Sometimes that dream, that dream don't need an interpretation for me. That, mean, that dream means, boy, you just ate too much. Sometimes food don't agree with us. Uh, uh, sometimes we just in a bad place and we have dreams. And, but every dream don't need interpreting. And every dream, can I tell you this, is not from God. Stop running to a preacher or somebody saying, hey, can you interpret this dream? What is, it was five sheep, they were playing football, but they was with a basketball, and, and, and none of them had on helmets. He, like, listen, we don't want to hear this mess. That's not something from God. It's foolishness. Only God interprets dreams. It is his business. If you pray about the dream and God doesn't give you an interpretation, then don't worry about it. Live for him. Be holy. Be righteous. Glorify him. Praise him. Worship him. Don't worry about the dream. It's his business. It's not your business. True leaders are servants. True leaders are recognize they, they 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 give recognition to God but true leaders speak the truth no matter what this is my favorite part of this passage how Joseph stood boldly and spoke the truth no matter the outcome we need more leaders like Joseph who speak the truth and don't care what people say about it he told him, hey, tell me your dreams. Verse 9, he said, they say this. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, in my dream I saw a vine uh, in front of me. And on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and the clusters ripened into grapes. So Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. Joseph said this in verse 12. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand just as you used to do when you were his cup bearer. But when all goes well... With you, remember me and show me kindness. Uh, uh, he said, uh, kindness, mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from, my, from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. Now, many people have said that Joseph sitting here, he complaining. I thought God was with you. Now you're complaining. No, he's not complaining. Joseph is speaking God against injustice. 
It's okay to be a great servant and speak out against injustice. Joseph said, I don't belong here. I done no wrong. I know this is not a, 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 a very, very, you know, terrible prison. I'm, in, I'm still in my master's house or I'm in this dungeon, but still, I don't have no freedom. I shouldn't be here. I have been falsely accused. My brothers mistreated me. Now I've been falsely accused by Mrs. Potiphar, and here I am in this dungeon. He said, man, I, I just want to get out of here. I want some type of normal life as a prisoner. I want to be able to mingle with other prisoners and hang out with them. Go to the prison parties and, you know, and prison banquets and just go and have fun. But here he is. He's saying, I am in a dungeon, man. Get me out of here. The, 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 the cupbearer has his dream. He says, three days is what the three branches mean. You're going to be restored to your job. Listen, that's good news. But look at verse 16. When the chief baker saw Joseph had been, had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, you know, uh, I too had a dream. And on my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Verse 18, this is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days, out of three days all again. Within three days, Pharaoh would lift off your head and impale your body on a pole. <laughs> it says, and the birds would eat away your flesh. I mean, wow. Wow. He's not afraid to give the good news, but he's also not afraid to give the bad news. We have too many preachers who are speaking only favorable messages. To too many of them only want to itch their ears and tickle their ears and make them feel good. But, but listen, there is some favorable messages in the Bible and some unfavorable messages in the Bible. And he's not afraid to tell them. He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't say, you know, well, man, you know, you know, I really don't know what this would mean. You know, God didn't give me the true, true. So, so, so between me and you, just, just go on live your life. Now, he told him, man, listen, you're going to die. In, in three days, you're going to die a horrible death. He, 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 was, he was real with him. And we must speak the truth no matter what. Whether the message is favorable or unfavorable, we still must speak the truth. Listen, and, and some feelings are going to be hurt. Some people are going to leave the church. Some people are going to get mad. Some people are going to be mad at you. They're going to be mad at God. They're going to be mad at the church. They will just up and uproot and leave. But listen, we still have to speak the truth in love. It must be done. And, and here's, the, here's the real thing. Because that was, that was someone else who was in the grave for three days. His name is Jesus Christ. And because of these three days, depending on what you believe, there is either favorable odds or unfavorable odds. We cannot be afraid to tell people that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father except by him. We have to tell them that Jesus Christ is the only way, no matter what you believe. There is no other way, there's no other Savior, there's no other foundation, there's no other creator. Jesus Christ is the way. And if you don't believe in him, that's some unfavorable odds. You will die a sinner's death and you will go to hell. We have to tell the message. We have to tell and speak the truth no matter what. But to some of us who are believers, that is a favorable story because we know we are born again. We know that we belong to God. And because of his death and because of his three days and he rose with all power in his hands, we will be in his presence. We will have a home in heaven. We will walk the streets that are paved with gold. We will be in the presence of the Lamb of God. 
But for others, it's unfavorable. There will only be weeping and gnashing of teeth for them. But we cannot be afraid. We must speak the truth. We have to tell the message. The message is, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. We cannot waver. We cannot compromise. We cannot say, you know what, hey, just believe what you want to believe. And, and it's okay to be a part of that other religion. And, and it's okay to be this or that. No, no. Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only way. Why are we so afraid to speak the truth? Why are we so afraid to, to be a Christian on our job? All right. Why are you so afraid, children, to stand out and be a Christian at school? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you so afraid to be a believer of God in your neighborhood? Because people look at you unfavorably. But listen, God is with you and everything you do, you will prosper and be successful. You have to believe in God. Yes. Trust in his son. Don't deny. Tell the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings salvation. Don't be ashamed of who Jesus Christ is. Don't be ashamed that he died for your sins. Don't be ashamed that he is a, ashamed he's a healer and he is a way maker. Don't you be ashamed of your Lord and your God. We got to speak the truth. No matter what. No matter what. Look at what verse 20 says. It says this. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday. And he gave a feast for all his officials. And, and look, look how nice Pharaoh is. He, he, all his officials. He even went and got these two fellas out of prison. They, they officials too. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of, of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer, just like Joseph said, to his position. Just like, the God gave, like God gave the interpretation, he got his job back. So that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he, he impaled the chief baker just as Joseph said. He, he, listen, he killed this fellow. Just like he said. So, according to history, they believe that after the investigation was over, Pharaoh found out it wasn't the cupbearer who was trying to kill him. It was the baker. That, that, now that's just speculation. The Bible doesn't speak that. That's just speculation. But, but historians believe that he, he killed one and not the other because the investigation is finished. It's his birthday and the proof, the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, it falls on the baker. The baker's hung. The baker is decapitated. His head is put on the stake. This fella is done for. But look at verse 23. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Man, he, he forgot Joseph. Joseph asked him, when you, man, can you be kind to me? Can you remember me when you go back to Pharaoh's house? Tell him, man, that's been some injustice going on. I want some freedom. I want out of this place. But he forgot about him. Can I say this to you before we, before we, we, we close today? How easy it is to forget people who have blessed us along the way. How easy it is to forget our parents' children who have labored for us and done so much for us. They are the reasons why we had clothes, why we had food, why we had shelter. God was working through them. And, and, and how dare you forget about their love and their kindness and you grow up to be disrespectful. How can we forget about God? God placed you on that job and then you get on that job and you act like a hellion. Yeah, yeah. How can you forget about God? How can you forget about 
great leaders in the church. Maybe a Sunday school teacher who taught you along the way. Maybe a church, a children's church leader. Maybe your pastor. How can you forget what he has done or what somebody has done coming to see you when you were sick, praying for you, praying over your children, loving you, feeding you, providing for you. How can you forget these people? The text says he just didn't remember. He forgot about Joseph. Poor Joseph. But remember, Joseph is on God's timing. That's right. That's right. He will come out when God yeah. says he yeah. will come out. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But Joseph, no, man, that's been some injustice, man. You forgot all about me. But here's the key. Be patient. Be patient. True servant leaders are patient. We, we got to be. Joseph, be patient. Hold on. Why? Because your time is coming. The song says, God has a blessing with your name on it. Hold on. It's coming. And God will bring you out. Don't forget people who blessed you. Don't forget, hey, go and bless them back. Go and pray for them. Go and love on them. Because they're going to be in need too. Life is like a roller coaster. It's up and it's down. And when you were down, somebody was up and they blessed. Yeah. Now you up and somebody else is down, don't just overlook. Go and bless. Yes. Go and bless. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. praying that God is developing more leaders in the body of Christ. Yes. To stand up and be true yes. servant leaders yes. like this great young man, Joseph. Joseph. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. God bless you. May God bless all those who heard his word today. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Oh, praise.